Hey guys, 420 scene here. Hope everyone's having a super stony day. Let me know what you're token on and where you're watching the video from. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe, check us out on Patreon. We got smoke sets, live streams, giveaways, tips, early access to all our videos. And we also have a new perk on Patreon where you get our secret gaming discord. And even if you don't play, I'll be available on there for voice so I could answer any questions that you might have. Pretty much like a one-on-one -on -one type of deal. Lots of rad stuff on there. So I have a quick announcement that I gotta make. According to the analytical chart over here, it seems like you guys aren't really active in the mornings. So starting on December 2nd, which is on a Friday, we're going to be uploading at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays, which is our normal upload schedule anyway. The only thing that's going to be changing are the times. So every video leading up to December 2nd, I'm going to be making the same announcement. So nobody, and I mean nobody, can be like, yo, scene. What the deal, yo, bro? You still uploading videos? I promise you, we're not going anywhere. Having said that, back to our scheduled broadcast. The one thing that I feel like we can all agree on is that eliminating guesswork in your runs are always going to lead to more success. You know, when you have guesswork, you have more questions than answers. When you have more questions than answers, you're always going to be second guessing yourself. You're more prone to being more easily influenced, whether it's, you know, on somebody's Discord or somebody's forum or any kind of piece of information that could be debatable. We're going to be getting into the water frequency a little bit. Now, trust me, this is all relative to what I'm leading up to. Now, Let's just take me for example here. I'm gonna be, you know what? I'm gonna be my own test subject right here. Let's just say that I'm not really sure about something and I'm just guessing. And it can be a technique or it can be about watering frequency. I mean, it can be anything related to horticulture or just even anything in general. If I don't know something and I'm unsure of something and I'm just guessing, I'm gonna be a lot more easily influenced than somebody that already knows specifically what they're doing and why they're doing it. I've seen people asking me especially during the transition of the flowering stage, how often they should be watering based on their container size and based on their own feeding regimen. Now, during veg, it's easy because, yeah, uh, thank you for that. Who is texting me? Anyway, back to what I was saying. During veg, it's easy because they don't really need that much. I've said that in so many of my videos. Just make sure to give them water whenever the leaves are just sitting at a lower position and try to get a minimal amount of runoff so you don't flush out all the amendments. You know, that's pretty easy, but let's talk about the transitioning into the flowering stage because your watering regimen is always going to be different during flowering than during veg. Their feeding habits are just a lot different. So this video is more about that transitional period because I see a lot of people having issues with that. And people have been emailing me and hitting me up on Discord asking me, you know, what should I do during the transition? Well, this is the video to watch. Now I have mentioned this in videos before, but I mean, let's be real here. Who's really going to shuffle through 250 of my videos? just to find that one piece of information that you're looking for. I mean, I totally condone binge watching 420 scene. I promise you, I will not have a problem. Now I'm gonna explain to you what I do in finding out my lady's feeding patterns so that way you can try this out and see if it works for you. After you flip into the flowering stage or let's just say that you're running autos, you'll already be able to know when you're transitioning into the flowering stage and I'm not sure how you guys do it, but I don't really water that much during veg. I just don't, they just don't need it. If they don't ask for for it, I ain't giving it to them. But like I said, during veg, they don't really need it. And if they do need it, they're gonna tell me, but I generally can go a week or more without watering because I like to let the roots stretch out a little bit, increases growth that way. I'm not saying that's going to be the case every single time. You have to pay attention to your ladies. You know, there are ladies that are gonna need it every three or four days, but there are gonna be ladies out there that don't really need it. They're a little bit more finicky. So you kind of have to alter your regimen based around what they want or they prefer. As you're transitioning into the flowering stage, pay attention to how often you're watering. Like, you know, how many days? If all of a sudden the leaves are starting to sit at a lower position a lot more frequently, that's when you can subtract a day. You guys listening, right? Make sure you subtract a day and that's how you're gonna be able to figure out how often you should be watering. And it might sound like such an easy tip, but if it was really that easy, you guys wouldn't be asking me how frequently you should be watering during the transitioning period 
to the flowering stage, but I promise you, once you get this dialed in, you'll be solid. It's gonna work every time. And then once you do that, like subtract a day kind of technique, that is when you're gonna finally be able to figure out what the schedule is gonna be for the course of the rest of the flowering stage. Because I've noticed that when I do this during the transitional period, and then I subtract a day, it seems like that's kind of what they prefer. It's not like they just change it, you know, like week three or week four. It, it seems to me like it stays the same until, you know, from start to finish from the transitional period of flowering until, you know, it's you're, till you're finally done pretty much. My other piece of advice is to keep track of how many days you're going without water. Keep track from start to finish because if you don't, you will be sorry once that transition into the flowering stage takes place because once that change happens, you better be ready to analyze that and figure out how many days you're gonna be going so you can subtract that one day. Like I feel like if you're not paying attention to this, you know, from even from start to finish, you're not gonna be able to dial it in as well as you would have if you did pay attention. And also on top of that, I feel like it's a really, I think it's really cool to kind of analyze all the information from your ladies from start to finish so you can kind of have at least a good idea when it comes time to the transitional period if that makes sense pretty much what i'm saying is if you're not tracking your days you're guessing so if you're not tracking you're going to end up in a situation where you're already giving them water during the flowering stage when they are already in need of it like that downtime however many hours or how many days that's going to be you want to be able to minimize the time when they need it so that way they're on a repeated schedule and they can just keep working on producing big flowers for you guys. So like I was saying, you don't wanna be in a situation where maybe half a day goes by or even if it's a few, I don't wanna say a few hours because that's penny pinching right there, but even if you let like maybe 12 hours or even 24 hours go by when they actually do need the water, you know, you want, pretty much you wanna keep that workflow going if that makes, you guys understand what I'm saying, right? So, I mean, that's 12 to 24 hours where they're just slacking because you you didn't take the time to keep track of their change of their feeding regimen. As far as the container size goes, I've already made videos on this. You can go look for it. I can give you some rough estimates that I would be going with. And of course, you know, you could always play around with it, but the whole idea is to get minimal runoff. That's my own personal opinion. I don't like having a lot of runoff. Just enough runoff where you can see that the water is cruising to the bottom of your container. So that way, you know, your peace of mind kicks in knowing that you're not getting waterlogged. Let's just say you're in a five gallon container. I would go with half a gallon of water. If you're in a five gallon container and you're using a full gallon of water i promise you right now if you have subpar drainage you're gonna have a lot of water log problems which is gonna eventually lead to root rot and it's just no bueno it's just it's not a good time. If you're going with a seven or 10 gallon container, I know before I said you can use a full gallon, but from the last run, I really wasn't happy with how much runoff I had. So I would go with three fourths gallon of water. That should be good. That's what I was going on with my last run. And if you're running in something, let's just say you're running in something bigger than a town gallon. Like let's just say you're running in a 15 gallon container, then you can just use a full gallon of water at that point. Because I mean, you know, you have, you know, you have a lot of soil that you're gonna be going through. So if you're using something a little bit more than 10 gallon, then you can just use that full gallon of water and you should still have a little bit of runoff, but it should be perfectly fine. After experimenting with this, I feel like a full gallon of water in a 10 gallon container, it's just a little bit too much, a little bit more than I'm comfortable with. I got a little bit more runoff than I was happy with because I know I did a video in the past where I would just go a full gallon of water in a 10 gallon container and you can still do that if you'd like. Again, you guys are gonna have to do your own homework and experiment and find out how much runoff is gonna be good for you. But I'm going off based on the last few runs and what I've analyzed and noticed. Everybody has different preferences on this sort of thing. And of course, if you guys have any other questions, you can hit me up on Patreon, you can hit me up on Discord, or even drop some comments in the comment section. If you are on Patreon, you can totally hit me up on the gaming channel. I'm usually live at nights. I stream some gameplay and you could ask me whatever questions you have, even if you're not a gamer, like I said in the beginning of the video. So before we close off today's video, I wanna thank everyone everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon. I really appreciate the love and support. So before we close out today's video, be sure to drop that fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe for more content. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, stay safe. Peace.